So welcome back to another video with Inside the Digital Pros at No Code Academy. And this particular video is a bit of an update from one that I did last year about automatically creating user profiles when your users register for your Flutterflow application for the first time using Superbase. Bit of a mouthful, but it's a bit of an update because there's some new steps involved in that. So it's a bit of a two-part. So we're gonna focus on the first bit about getting all of Superbase set up. And in the second part, we're gonna focus then on updating a little bit of row-level security just to kind of tighten up your application a little a bit more. So without further ado, let's get into the video and let's get cracking. Okay then, so here is a brand new fresh project with inside a super base. So it's nice and clean. Of course, if you have a project yourself, then chances are you've already got it configured with various other tables, but I'm gonna keep it really simple in this particular video. And I'm gonna set everything up as scratch. So here we go then, let's go into table editor. Let's create a brand new table. So I'm gonna hit the little create table button here and I'm gonna just type in here, uh, profile like that. I'm gonna turn off row level security first. We'll come back and sort that out at a later later point, hit confirm. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change the particular column here. We've got an ID, but the type is an int eight. This is not kind of what we need. We want this to kind of be a UUID. This is kind of like that, that long kind of like random sort of user ID that gets allocated when a user registers with inside the application. So we're gonna change our type to match that because we're gonna create a relationship between this particular table and the users table as well, which means ultimately then if we delete the user from Superbase, then it will delete the profile within inside this particular database. So let's set that relationship up. So the first thing I need to do is just type in UUID here and just make sure that my ID matches that type here. But default value, let's just delete all of that. I'm not interested in any of that here. I'm gonna add a brand new column in here. Now this is gonna be say, like for example, a display name or something like that, because in your application, you might wanna have like a nickname or something like that. So we're just gonna set this up as a text, just choose text. Let's add another column in. Now this is just gonna be email address something like that and just go to then the text and that is all good so that's great we can just hit save now just make sure that our our table gets saved for profile you see that there on the left hand side is which is what we've got so now we've got our profile table created, we now need to set that relationship up. This is where things kind of change with inside Superbase compared to the previous video that I created. So now we've got that, let's go back in here, the three dots, let's just select that, edit the table. Let's just move down here because the kind of relationships will pop down here into the bottom. We can add a foreign key relationship. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my schema here. I'm gonna move down here to the author schema. I'm gonna select the table. If I go all the way down here, you can see I've got this one called users. So just select that. Now here's my public profile table. This is the table that I've just created and here is the auth user. So now what I want to do is kind of establish that link between this particular table and the auth users table. That's really straightforward. We're just going to the public profile. Here we've got our ID, which is the UUID. So just select that. We're going to match that up with the equivalent, which is the ID and the UUID. So we've now got that kind of the relationship now set with inside our table. Now this is where it gets a little bit more interesting as well, because of course, if we say that if we're going to remove Move the user from our Superbase database. And we want to kind of cascade that down then to the table that has the relationship. So quite simply, we can say cascade here. So we're going to say action if the reference row is removed, then cascade that operation and delete the records from the actual the actual users table as well. And it kind of says that here, it says delete a record from the auth.users will also delete any records that reference it in this table. So that kind of does everything that we need to, to do. So um, we can just say save here, that's gonna be great. And I can just hit down the save option down here. And then you'll see that um, the table is all kind of set up for us now. We can kind of quickly test this now with inside uh, sort of Superbase itself. So on the left hand side, I'm gonna go on to authentication. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a brand new user in my account. Account. So I'm just going to say create a new user and I'm just going to put my email address in here, the digital pro at outlook.com like that. Put a password in here. Let's just put a load of uh, rubbish in here. Uh, it's quite simple like that. Just uh, create the user itself. No, thank you. So the user is now created. Now I've got this user ID. So I'm just going to copy that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that profile up by hand because of course it's not automatically creating it for us at this point. So let's move back over then to the table head. So let's go to profile. Let's insert a brand new record here. So I'm just going to paste that UUID in here. And of course I could have gone to select record and selected that as the user, but I've done that. Uh, I'm just going to put here Steve, something like that. And email address abc at x uh, xyz or something like that just it can be anything you like here just hit save 
Now that is all good. So we've got the user created. So this is kind of like if I've kind of registered that user now we're inside my Flutterflow application. Let's just quickly test that cascade here and just make sure we get that deletion that happened. So I'll move back over to authentication uh, and go to then the users here on the, on the on the list here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the three dots. I'm going to say delete user. Now what should happen is that the cascade should happen. I should go back into my table editor and you'll see I'll go to my profile and boom, it's gone. So the cascade is working for us. So that's the first part now set up with inside a Superbase itself. So let's now move on to the next bit. Okay, so now our table has been created. We now need to create what is called a function. And this is a very specific function that we're going to create, which is going to kind of be, is going to kind of get kicked off when a new user gets registered with inside our application. Now this is called a trigger function. Now we'll come back to the trigger bit very, very shortly, but we're just going to create a specific type of function with inside a Superbase. And then we'll kind of hook the two together very shortly. So on the left hand side here, I'm just going to move over then to the database option. I'm going to select functions and you can see I've got no functions in this particular project at all. I'm going to hit the create a new function and I'm just going to put a name in here. So I've got create a profile for new user. That's absolutely fine. That's a very similar name that I've used previously here. Now the return type is going to be important. This is going to be of type trigger. Again, just make sure we set that here and um, then the, the two parts of this will kind of match up for us very shortly. I'm just going to, inside this definition area here, I'm just going to paste a little bit of code in here and I'll explain to you what this is really doing here. So this is a function, so it's got a kind of a beginning, uh, oh sorry, it's got a beginning and it's got an end. And then of course here we've got a little bit of a SQL that's kind of going on. So what we're kind of doing here is with, at the time that this function is gets gets invoked, we'll have a kind of a row available to us. And what we're kind of saying here is that we have a, an, uh, in our profile table, we have a column called ID and we have an email address. And what we're doing is, is we're going to pass in some values into that to, to obviously insert that into our database. So here, it, this new is, re, is representing the row that we've got available at this particular time. So this is going to be the ID of that particular row. And of course, here is the email of that particular row itself. And here we're just simply just returning that record back. So that's kind of all that we need to do. It's as simple as that to insert those details. Let's just scroll down a little bit here. We've got this show advanced settings. We just need to toggle that on. I'm just going to scroll down in this particular window here. And what I need to do is I need to just set this security definer here. If I just select that, you can kind of see what this kind of is saying here, that the function is to be executed with the privileges of the user that created it. So of course, the user is going to be creating this because it's going to be coming from our front end application. So we want to make sure that we kind of set the security context um, to be quite tight around the user that is kind of creating it. So that's all that we need to do. We can hit confirm. We should see that get created nicely up the top right there. So we now have our function created, but of course we need to find a way to trigger this and that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so once upon a time in Superbase, we could create triggers with inside our, our users table. It's kind of like a, a private table with inside a Superbase. We used to be able to come here, click on triggers. We used to go to create new trigger. And we used to be able to kind of select the table here. But unfortunately, we can't get access to kind of like private schema type tables. These are what are kind of ones that kind of sit a little bit more behind the scenes. So we kind of have to create our trigger in a slightly different way. So let's move now over to then the SQL editor on the left hand side. I've got a brand new kind of query window up here. I'm just going to paste a little bit of, uh, of, of a query in here and I'll kind of just walk you through what this is kind of doing. So here, the top bit is quite self-explanatory. Here we're creating a brand new trigger called new underscore user trigger. That's the kind of the name of this particular trigger. We're saying that after the insert of the record on the auth.users table, now for each of the rows that gets created, and we're only creating one at a time here, so it's just one single row, we're going to then execute this function called create pro file for new user. Now, when that function gets executed, then the row is going to be available to us. The new record is going to be available to us with inside that particular function. That's what you saw just a moment ago when you saw like the new.id and the new.email. So that's going to be available to us. And of course, we can then insert that row with inside our database table. So all we need to do now is hit run here. So just select run. That's going to be kind of executed here, which is great. And we can move just back over then to then the database. We can go to then the, uh, the triggers. We can 
move up here where it says schema we can just select the off schema and you can see that that trigger has now been created and it's quite obvious there what it's kind of doing here is affecting the users table we're, we're triggering this particular function which is the one that we just created and here is the after insert and of course it's enabled this is all golden for us and that should work for us nicely so we now just head over and let's just do that little manual test as we did before so I'm just going to create a brand new user here let's create this here let's just type in my details here so there we go just put a temporary password in here let's just create a new user now that's uh, come up now and we've got a little success message up there that that looks like that everything is there's been no errors or anything like that so it looks like our trigger is probably executed move over the table editor now if i go to the profile table we should see then the row gets created which is fantastic this is the id of our user and you can see that it's automatically inserted uh, my email address um, at, into the correct column of course display name will be empty here but that's set ourselves up quite nicely because with inside our front end application we could create more and more columns here and we can populate those details uh, um, that we could have like a profile screen or something like that with inside our front end application so great that is all set up for us now and of course if we were now to hook our flutterflow application onto creating these profiles then they'll automatically get created so let's now quickly move on then to the next bit Okay, time for a quick demo then with inside a Flutterflow project. Here is a really, really simple application. Of course, the link is in the description if you want to kind of grab hold of this. It's set up very in a very basic way with my Superbase project. I've just kind of got authentication enabled. I kind of hooked up a few buttons in here to authenticate and to create my account. Let's quickly run this now in the simulator, which I've kind of pre-populated already with some details ready for me to hit the submit. So I'm just gonna hit the create account button. You're gonna see I've now hopefully had my account created because it appears that I've actually signed in. But if I now head over to Superbase, there it is. There's the brand new record this kind of created there. I've got my email address automatically populated. So that just goes to show how, how easy it is to kind of get this first part kind of all set up with automatically creating profile records with inside your Superbase table itself. Now, we're gonna cover a little bit more in the second part to this particular video because we're gonna look at row level security and kind of get ourselves a little bit more watertight with inside our application. So if you like this video, please do uh, like the video. Please do subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. There's more coming from Superbase, obviously, in the future. And there's also a lot on Superbase already on the actual channel itself. And of course, also, well, if you're not a member of the Digital Pros No Code Academy, please do check the link in the description. It'd be great to have you part of the community. Lots of written articles and one about this as well, and lots of other sample projects and more video content and a great community there as well. Please do join the community. It'd be great to have you there. So until the next video, I'll see you soon.